Good evening, gentle persons, and gentle unpersons, and everyone else as well. Welcome to, uh, what is it? Shit. I looked at it before I started filming. Welcome to Septandy the 14th. Um, we are done with the Tandy 1000 stuff, and it's fortuitous, the, uh, the power cord uh, for the broken Tandy 1000 power supply happens to be exactly what we need to um, plug in this uh, TRS-80 Model 4 power supply without having to fuck around with um, the, all of the stuff in the big, big enclosure thing that we were fooling with last time. So yes, we're back to Model 4 stuff this evening, and I feel like a dumbass. Probably because I am a dumbass. Now, um, I should have checked this. It should have been, like, the second thing that I checked. But I didn't. Uh, so things may have just gotten much easier and I may have busted two wall warts for no reason. Which is unfortunate because a wall wart is a terrible thing to bust open when you don't need it. But let's, let's see if I can zoomify here without getting unfocused. Alright, uh, these are the pins on the opposite side of the board, on the foil side of the board, uh, where the connector is that leads to the CRT controller board, the CRT analog board, and the main logic board. And uh, I don't know if you can see this on the camera or not, but if you look closely here, you can see what appears to be cracks around the solder joints here uh, on the two pins that go to the uh, CRT analog board. And if you move over here, it looks like there are a couple more here. I don't know if these are cold solder joints or if they're damage that happened some other time, but... Um, that makes me think that, yeah, there's another one here on this end. All of these, most of these connections are, are, are cracked and very poor. And um, I'm curious to see if we m plug it in and move down here and stick a meter across this big capacitor right here, uh, if we'll read 12 volts on that bad boy. Um, it may just not be making it up to the connector because of this shitty connection here. Wouldn't that be something? We won't have to, uh, we won't have to do any hackery at all. Um, I should have checked this, like, second thing. Dumber than a sack of hammers. Now you can hear it clicking because part of this power supply, the part of the power supply that goes to the logic board, is a switching power supply and they won't work unless they have a load on them, but um, at least according to the TRS-80 Model 4P power supply that, uh, schematic that I was looking at, a different power supply than this one, but if, if it is designed basically the same way, uh, the supply for the, um, for the CRT analog board is actually a linear power supply. I don't know why they did that. Maybe, maybe they wanted it to be um, a very, very clean power. I don't know. So let's see if we get 12 volts right here. And glory be 15 volts. That's close enough to 12 volts to work, I'll bet you. So, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, fellers. I'm just gonna reflow all these solder joints and put the sucker back together and see what happens. And it may be no more difficult than that. Um, please, please tell me what a dumbass I am in the comments. Because um, I should have checked that a long time. We could have already had this thing fixed. I didn't need. I don't need a desoldering gun for this. Broke the desoldering gun. Maybe, maybe it was fate. The uh, the old computer muses are trying to keep me from fucking things up as much as usual. Alright, um, let me get my soldering iron heated up and we will
give her hell. Alright, so uh, since I'm not going to add very much uh, new solder to this thing, I'm just going to reflow these joints that are here. I am going to add a little bit of flux here just to try to keep everything clean. I know it's a pain in the ass to clean it up afterwards, but uh, I think it'll make our uh, our fix-it job here a little bit more robust, which will be good. So uh, that's too much flux because I always use too much flux. Let's reflow this bad boy, and I'm gonna put just a little extra solder on too, just a little bit, not much. So. Uh, We'll start at this end. Sizzle, sizzle, mo shizzle. Get hot, boy. I don't think it got hot enough. Let's see what that looks like. Well, that looks like ass. What the F? Maybe there's something wrong with the pad, I don't know. Get hot, boy. Get in there, solder. Make a joint. It's not sticking very well. Let me, uh, those are awfully large traces on this thing. Let me, uh, turn my iron up to 400. Try it with a little more power. See, look at that. It's like the. It's not bonding to the pad. Am I not getting the pad hot enough? See, all, all the all the solder is going to flow through that hole and fuck the connector up. There. That still doesn't just doesn't look quite right. It's like it's a cold solder joint, but it shouldn't be. I mean, shit, 400 degrees Celsius ought to be plenty for something this size. Hell, 350 ought to be plenty for something this size. I'm going to end up melting the damn plastic on the other side. Ah, uh, no, I'm, I'm going to scrape off some of this solder mask and make sure, make sure we actually have a connection. Maybe the Maybe whenever something broke here, it actually damaged the, uh... Yeah, do the same over here. Might have actually damaged the, uh, the pads that we're trying to solder to here. Try to get that screaming shit off the of it. Alright, yeah. Contrary bastard. Take the fucking solder. Get hot. Get hot. Get hot. Get out there on that shit. Get out there and stick. Get out there and stick. There you go. That ought to be alright. Let's do the same for this one. Yeah, that is, that is, uh, that is trace damage. That's, uh, a piece of the trace came up when the uh, solder joint broke, but uh, this, uh, this jury rigging here, I'll to take care of that now. Let's get the meter out here and see if we have voltage on these two pins now. And we do. Happy day. We can put the sucker back in the machine and see if everything is groovy now. Let's do that. All right. Is it gonna smoke? Is it gonna smoke? There we go, boys. All right. 
we didn't have to do anything hacky to the power supply. That, uh, that pleases me. I don't think this disk drive is working. Oh. Did you see that? It's doing weird shit. Something funny going on. I can hear I don't know what was going on there now everything's back to normal Back to Model 3 mode. Okay, okay. That was a little strange. I don't know why the disk drive was running every once in a while like that. Well, now that we've gotten this far, we must, uh, we must of course fart around with it a little bit and make sure the keyboard works. It seems to. Where is it? Oh, these weird layout keyboards. You never know where any of the symbols are. Break, yeah, okay. It's not control C, it's break. I've never used this is the first time that I've done anything with a TRS 80 model 3 or 4. In fact, no, this is the first time that I've done anything with anything other than a TRS 80 DT1 that is like a TRS 80. So, yay! Happy day! I don't know why the screen was fucking up a little bit before. It was some kind of power issue. The disk drive was resetting too. When you power cycle just these disk drives, um, they run for a second. I can't get it to do it now, so I don't know what I don't know what was going on. Wiggling cables, isn't doing anything. Who the hell knows? So yeah, I guess now that we uh, finally have what appears to be reliable power, maybe <laughs> that whatever was going on there before wasn't good, but it'll be all right. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. If it blows up, we'll fix it. Um, but yeah, now that we've got semi-reliable power, maybe we can actually do some troubleshooting. So let me make sure that all of the keys work. And uh, I'll be back in a second. You don't want to watch this garbage. I think for the moment I'm just going to swap these two disk drives and hope that this one works. I, I can't hear any... Uh, head seeking on this one and it won't boot any floppies but I'm going to plug this one I'm gonna tr well I I keep forgetting this is an actual Shugart interface I'm gonna get in here and uh, unplug this drive and then jump over this one to drive zero and uh, see if we can boot off of it okay that was a genuine pain in the ass to get out of there I swear um, I can't figure out uh, how to set the drive IDs on these tandem drives. I'm gonna have to look for some documentation I thought at first that it was probably this punch block here I was gonna have to pull that and maybe plug like a row of dip switches in there or something so I could change the drive IDs, but uh, Both of these drives are punched the same I think so that can't be it unless that's part of the problem um, but no, I don't think it is but uh, the head, the, the read head was all the way back. This is the zero, well, this is the drive that was trying to boot before. Um, so I, I pushed it forward a little bit by hand, and uh, I'm going to fire the thing up, and we'll see 
if that head moves and then we'll probably have to uh, save the rest of this for tomorrow night it's getting late now and I need to find the documentation for these disk drives so here goes the power let's see what happens okay the head seeked back to the zero position so uh, I don't know uh, we may need to like adjust the motor speed or some shit, I don't know. Well, nothing's coming up on the screen now, but it's certainly not seeking. Yeah, something's funny. Uh, once I figure out how to jumper this other drive to drive zero, we'll, um, we'll try something else. I mean, maybe there's nothing on these discs anyway. I mean, who the hell knows, right? These are just, these are what came in the came in the disk drives. They may have just been junk disks that were put in there uh, so the drive doors could be closed and everything would be, you know, protected for shipping. So, who knows? Yeah, I, I'm going to have to find some documentation on this drive. Uh, sorry for wasting your time. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow evening, hopefully. Uh, or maybe... No, I won't see you tomorrow evening. I'll see you Wednesday evening. I've got some other stuff I need to do tomorrow. So, Wednesday! Wednesday, hopefully I will have read the documentation on this disk drive by then. And, you know what else is supposed to happen Wednesday? According to UPS, the Model 2 is supposed to get here, and I don't have any 8-inch media at all. So, I think before I go to bed, I'm going to uh, see if I can order a GoTech, because that'll probably be the easiest way to try to boot that thing. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time, fellas.